Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. This is going to be another game pickups video. And I'm um, sorry guys, I've not uploaded in probably over a month now. Um, this is probably the longest I've went in a while without uploading. I usually say, oh, I've not made a video in a week. I've not made a video in two weeks, maybe three weeks. But now, nah, this has been over a month. So it's been a long time. I haven't made a video since that top uh, top 10 Sonic the Hedgehog levels. Um, so yeah, it's been a while. But I'm finally getting around to making this. I could have actually made this like over the last couple of weeks, but I never got around to doing it. Uh, I also need to do uh, games I've recently completed as well. Because I've completed a few games since the last one. Uh, again, because it's been over a month, you know. So anyways, yeah, let's get on with the game pickups. So there's no PS1 games and no PS2 games. Uh, I've just never really like, seen much in like charity shops. I've never like uh, seen anything online that I'm interested in for a decent price. Uh, you know, obviously the the good PS1 games now they're usually quite expensive. So yeah, I've never really seen anything cheap that's uh, really caught my eye. So we've got a uh, PS3 games, a PS4 game, and some Xbox 360 games to add to the exclusive games or games that aren't on the PlayStation. Basically, they might be on PC as well. But you know, as long as I can't get them on PlayStation, I'll buy them on uh, the 360. You know. So uh, yeah, let's get on with it. We'll start off with a single PS4 game. I've not actually played this in like a bum in a week or something, maybe even longer than a week. Uh, I kind of abandoned it, not because I'm not enjoying it, just because the last time I played it I got a little bit frustrated with the game. And it is uh, Resident Evil 7, or Resident Evil Biohazard. Yeah, obviously a big Resident Evil fan, I've always, you know, wanted to get around to playing this. I didn't, you know, it doesn't feel, for me it doesn't feel, it didn't sound like anything like Resident Evil. I mean, to me it, it feels more like Outlast. Uh, if you've played Outlast, you know, I just, I don't like how it's not got like Jill or Claire or Leon or, or Chris or, you know, Barry, any of those guys, you know, Wesker, all those classic Resident Evil characters. Uh, I don't really like that, you know, for me, a big thing that I like about Resident Evil is the characters. You know, I love the characters of Leon and Claire and, you know, Chris and Jill, they're all great characters in my opinion, great, uh, you know, characters that I've grown up with in the Resident Evil series. Uh, but for me, this is went in a little bit of a, a different direction. It has got a few elements that do feel like Resident Evil, you know, you've got an item box uh, where you can store your items, obviously you've got a limited, you know, uh, inventory space, so that feels a, bit, a little bit like, you know, classic Resident Evil. Uh, obviously it's a little bit scary, you know, kind of like classic Resident Evil. Uh, it doesn't have ink ribbons, which I'm not, you know, I'm not too fussy about, you know, I mean, I did like, you know, classic Resident Evil with ink ribbons just because of nostalgia. But with this, I'm kind of glad it doesn't have ink ribbons, because I'm having to save the game a lot. Because this game's bloody hard. Uh, you die so quickly in this game. See, the last time I played this, I got really frustrated. Um, but the things I like about the game, it is, you know, the creepy atmosphere. You know, I do love scary games, you know. That's something that Resident Evil 5, uh, and I suppose Resident Evil 4. I didn't find Resident Evil 4 that scary either. Uh, and of course, Resident Evil 6 wasn't scary. They were fun games. I loved all those games. But I didn't think they were scary at all. Uh, the last scary game was, you know, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Uh, I thought that was kind of creepy at times. But yeah, I love how it's went for a more scary route. I do like that. I like how it's more survival horror. Uh, I like uh, the family that chase you. You know, you get, you know, captured by a family in this, like, house here. And, uh, yeah, you don't really have a lot to defend yourself with. Like, almost very, you know, limited. And I like hiding from the family. It kind of has elements of, you know, haunting ground, per se. Even on this year, a little bit more, you know, armed and hunting ground. You don't have any, like, guns in that game at all. Uh, but I like how you can, like, hide from people, like, try and creep around without them, like, seeing you. I love that. I love that, you know, element. I really think that works well. I don't like the monsters that are, like, these, like, leech things. Oh, my God. Those things, they're just draining all my ammo. I'm at a bit, at the moment, we have to go inside this, like, basement kind of thing. And there's so many of these leech things, and they're so difficult to kill, and they do so much damage to you. Uh, it's it's bloody, it's crazy, guys. I, I was on that for maybe half an hour, couldn't make any progress. I think I've got to go back and get a shotgun or something. Um, you know, figure out how to get the shotgun, because I need to blow my shotgun to get through that, because there's so many of them, and they just whip my ass every single time. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the game, don't get me wrong, guys. I just think... It could end with less of the bugs and more like, getting chased around with the family members. I think that's really bloody, you know, cool when that happens. But uh, yeah, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard doesn't come with papers. 
Not manuals anymore, of course. Uh, this was mint, I believe. Yeah. Mint condition. I forgot to say, guys, this was just over £8, so an absolute bargain. Uh, I don't know why somebody sold it so cheap on eBay for a woman, just over £8. Uh, crazy, because this is still like a £17, £18 game. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back into it. I just needed a little bit of a break. Uh, those bloody leeches, pain in the backside. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm still enjoying it. Just got a bit frustrated the last time I played it. So, yeah, a mixed bag. I might do a quick review on it just because I'm a big fan of Resident Evil. And, you know, once I complete the game, I might be able to give you more of, like, a, an accurate opinion. So, I do love Res uh, Resident Evil, as you know. Uh, we'll get on with the PS3 games now. And uh, someone sold this on eBay for uh, £3, again, just a really, really cheap price. And it is uh, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix, which has uh, the remaster of Kingdom Hearts 1. It's got Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories and uh, Kingdom Hearts 358 slash 2 days, I guess. Which I believe doesn't, it's not actually the game, it's just actually the, the cinematics for that game. I think it's a DS game, and they didn't bother, like, you know, remastering it. Um, probably couldn't, because it would be a bit pixelated being, you know, a DS game. But, uh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 1, I did attempt to play Kingdom Hearts 1 back in the day, but I could never get into it. Um, well, I wouldn't say never. I got about 10 hours into the game, I just kind of lost interest in it. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1's bloody hard. Um, I'm not even going to deny it, Kingdom Hearts 1 is bloody solid. It really blooming is. You know, I started off the first Kingdom Hearts game I ever played was Kingdom Hearts 2, and I thought that game was, you know, it was pretty easy. You know, I didn't really have too many, you know, problems with the game, but yeah, Kingdom Hearts 1, it kicked my ass. You know, it really bloody tough. And I've actually played through Kingdom Hearts 1 now, and uh, I do like Kingdom Hearts 1. Nowhere near as good as Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 for me was far superior. Um, I feel like Kingdom Hearts 1, you kind of... It's kind of not clear where you're supposed to go quite a lot of the time, so you're going back and forward. Uh, don't even get me started with the, the Tarzan level. So much going back and forward, it wasn't even fun anymore. Uh, I loved the, you know, the location was cool, the soundtrack was great, but so much backtracking in that level. That was probably my least favourite level in the game, as well as the Little Mermaid level, because the underwater controls were bloody awful. I had Ursula, who was probably one of the toughest bosses in the game. In my opinion, she was bombing solid. Um, but yeah, Kingdom Hearts 1, finally played through the game, struggled my way through it, especially near the end, you know, the end of the world level. That level was just so bloody brutal. Uh, the final boss was brutal. Just a really, really hard game, you know, be prepared to die a lot. Uh, I think it took me, like, just over 40 hours to complete the game. Um, just because of the amount of grinding I had to do to beat the final boss, because he was bombing solid. Uh, I don't know, maybe I just suck at this game, but I thought it was bum and challenging. And um, I've started uh, Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, which is a card-based game. I'm not sure if it was, I'm guessing, the PSP, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, it's like card-based combat. I'm not really that into it. It's an interesting idea. I do appreciate how, you know, to try something different. But I, I don't know, I just, I find it bum and annoying. You know, I just want to batter the, batter the heart off from a bum and keyboard. I don't want to have to draw out cards and, yeah. It's an interesting idea. For me, it doesn't work too well. But I'm definitely happy to get this for £3. This was this was a steal, you know. Absolute steal. I'm just going to play it. And, uh, yeah, mint condition. Absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, um, definitely recommend these games if you want to get into Kingdom Hearts or get the... Basically, you can get both the collections together on the, the PS4 as well, which, you know, I might get around to at some point so I can play through Kingdom Hearts 2 and get all the trophies again, or, you know, as many as I can, basically. But, um, yeah, Kingdom Hearts game, still a good game, but Kingdom Hearts 2, far superior. I kind of want to play through Kingdom Hearts 2 again, uh, believe it or not. And I've seen the trailer, at, like, some gameplay trailers for uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. I saw the Toy Story world. Mind blowing! That looks absolutely flipping gorgeous. In the character models, uh, when you're like fighting outside, you know, outside Andy's house, and the grass just looks so bloody realistic. Absolutely amazing texture. Not gonna lie, guys, I'm marked out for that. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 has got the potential to be 
an absolute masterpiece. Fingers crossed. So the next I got was uh, actually just won this on uh, an auction. Uh, it's a game I've been interested in, you know, interested in getting for a little while. Uh, I do hear it's kind of got average reviews, but I wanted to give it a shot. And I was pleasantly surprised. This game's actually a pretty decent game. I had a lot of fun with this game. And it is Fuse. And I think this was like £2.70, I think. Just put a, a sneaky bid in. And uh, yeah, nobody else bidded on it. So uh, yeah, £2.70. And that comes... Not really a manual, is it? It's just... Yeah, it's just an online thing, I guess. But it comes with the disc, obviously, the important thing. <clears throat> Again, really, really good condition. So, yeah, Fuse, it's like... A, it's a team-based game. You're in a team of four. Uh, you can play it online or offline. offline. Um, I don't even know if the online servers will still work. Or any, if or anyone's, like, anybody's, like, playing the game online. But obviously I played it off wine and uh, to be honest I thought it was a decent game, you know, you're shooting robots, uh, the gun sounds are pretty damn satisfying, the characters were pretty decent, which was something I wasn't really expecting. And you can, you can basically switch between all four characters, you know, any stage. And they've all got like different powers, different guns. Um, I would say my favourite was probably Naya, uh, one of the female characters. She could basically go invisible. Uh, not from the beginning, I don't think. I think you have to unlock that ability as your characters level up. Uh, but yeah, you get like a invisibility cloak thing, so you can go invisible and attack people from behind. And she also has like a, a warp gun, she can create like warp holes that like suck enemies in. Uh, yeah, overall I thought this game was good. It had a lot of humour in it between the characters. Again, not expecting, I thought the characters were going to be bland and boring. But uh, yeah, I thought they were pretty decent. You know, I enjoyed them. I think they did their... You know, they did their job well. And, like I say, really enjoyed the game. Thought it was pretty damn good. It's only like a six, seven hour long game. And, uh, yeah, for me, it was... It's just one of those games that's, like... It shouldn't be, like, that great. You know? Um, but it's still real, real enjoyable. You know, you can have a... You know, definitely have a blast playing this. I would definitely recommend getting this if you can see it for, like, two or three pound. Uh, you know, it's definitely worth a shot. You know, because, like I say, I was... You know, I went in with low expectations... And, uh, yeah, pleasant was surprised. I thought it was a decent game. So, yep, Fuse. Insomniac games. Same people that did Ratchet and Clank and Resistance. <clears throat> so, um, next we have a bundle that I got. And a really bloody good bundle. Really happy with this. Uh, you can probably tell I've been finding some pretty damn, you know, good bargains recently. And I got these for uh, £10. So, it's free for £10. Again, absolute steal, especially when I show you the last game. So the first one was a, re a game I've already got, but um, obviously it was part of the bundle, so I had no choice. And it was a Soul Calibur 4. Really, really good fighting game, but like I say, I've already got it. Um, put many, many hours into this when I first got it, actually. This game was pretty damn addictive. Um, it could have been the first fighting game I got on PS3. Hmm. It was either that or Virtua Fighter 5. It might have been this one. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure. But it was definitely one of the first fighting games I got and I really like this game. This game's fantastic. But again, it's only like goes for like two or three pounds, so not why I bought the bundle, believe it or not. No, put that over there. Next to go on eBay. And the next game it came with uh, came it came with was the Simpsons game. So yeah, you can see this bundle starting to get a little bit better now. And this was a game I've been looking to get for a little while as well, but I was kind of thinking maybe I should just get it on the PS2 because, you know, it's an early PS3 game. It's not going to have, like, trophy support anyway. So I thought maybe I'll just get it on the PS2 at some point. Uh, can't, it won't be too much different. But, um, yeah, since it's part of this bundle, you know, I thought it was a, a good deal, you know. It's back of that. And that comes complete. And I think the disc had a couple, yeah, a few little minor marks. Very, very light. So yeah, The Simpsons game. Uh, a lot of people say this is a, you know, a pretty damn good game. You know, considering it's based on a TV show. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, it's decent, but for me, it doesn't capture my attention for a long period of time. 
Uh, basically, you're playing as Simpsons characters, you're playing as a team uh, quite often. Uh, you start off with Homer, then you go from the next level, which is Homer and Bart together. And I'm guessing the level after that will probably be Marge and Lisa together. And, you know, the Simpsons characters have got different, like, you know, different traits, different abilities that they can do. And basically to help each other through the level. You can play on co-op, I believe, as well. Um, yeah, for me, I think it's 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 all right. But again, it's, I, think it's, I just think it's not really, you know, too brilliant. You know, it doesn't really capture my attention for a long time. Uh, but it's Simpsons, you know, it's got the, the original voice actors. It's got some pretty damn decent quotes. It's got some original clips, um, you know, for the game. You know, it's not like just like take it from a TV show, it's actually, you know, new clips, I believe. So, um, yeah, I'll probably get into it at some point, you know, try and play through it. But at the moment, I'm not big into it. Um, yeah, it's decent, but nothing major. I wouldn't pay £10 for it, put it that way. Uh, that's basically what it usually goes for, maybe 8 to £10 on eBay. And this was the game that I wanted to get. This game is bloody expensive. This game's like bombing... Twenty pound or something. No matter where you buy it, whether you buy it on PS2, PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, uh, you're gonna have to pay at least twenty pound. I think the Xbox version might be even more expensive, maybe. But uh, yes, yeah, so happy to get this guys as part of the, the free for ten pound, and it was the Legend of Spyro: Dawn of the Dragon. What the expensive game this is. It didn't sell well at all. Uh, obviously, because people were probably fed up with Spyro at this point, because the Spyro games really went downhill, you know, on the PS2, and we started making the, the Legend of Spyro series. Look at that. So the lighting here is a bit weird, guys. I do apologise. But you can see the back of that. Boy. And absolutely brilliant condition. Really bloody good stuff. Weird case. I don't know if it's because it's like an early like PS3 game. But yeah, the case is like the disc holder is a bit weird. Um, is it? Unless it's a replacement. It could be a replacement case actually. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Now I think it's a replacement case, guys, because these like early games. You know, these are early games. Um, you know, came with PlayStation 3 at the top. If you can see that, uh, yeah, PlayStation through at the top, and uh, this doesn't even have like a Blu-ray mark or anything. So this is a replacement case. I didn't actually realise that. I'm not complaining. No bloody likely. This is like say an expensive game to get a hold of. Um, yeah, I didn't even notice it was a replacement case. I thought the disc holder was a bit funny, but yeah, still real boy happy to get this, guys. This is just like real boy expensive, and I wanted to try it. Yeah, I didn't really think it was going to be up too much, so £20 for this game was, you know, it was it was off the radar. I wasn't even thinking about getting it for that price. So in this game, it's basically Spyro. As you can see, he's all grown up. Uh, he's got like a slightly older voice, which I kind of prefer to like the PS2 games. Uh, I didn't really like, you know, the PS2 voice actor. Uh, the PS1 voice actor was brilliant. I thought it did the job really, really well. Uh, but yeah, I thought the PS2 games, I thought he sounded a little bit whiny, you know, you know, kind of like a, a bit of a whiny voice, I didn't really like it too much. You know, he almost sounded like Steve from Resident Evil Code Veronica, so I'd be that little misunderstanding, you know, um, you know, that kind of like whiny voice, it's, yeah, I didn't really like it too much. Um, so yeah, I think the voice actor's pretty decent, the gameplay feels, you know, very, very average, it's, you know, it's more like a beat em up rather than a, a platformer, uh, at least from what I've played so far. Uh, it does have some platforming, but a lot of the gameplay is just like beat them up. Uh, you're tied with... Cylinder, is it? Cinder. <laughs> Cylinder. Uh, yeah, Cinder. Yeah, you're, you're kind of like tied with her, so I think you play with, like you can play through the whole game like co-op uh, with Spyro and Cinder. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's decent. You know, if you went into it not thinking it was like a Spyro game, if you would never played Spyro, never, you know, witnessed the greatness of the PS1 games, you might go into this thinking, you know, it's a, it's a pretty decent dragon beat em up, I guess. You know, beat em up involving a dragon. So, yeah, it's kind of average, but I'm definitely looking, you know, forward to playing for it at some point, you know. Uh, I'm curious, guys, put it that way, I'm curious. 
to see what it's like. Uh, this is something interesting. You can fly for the first time, like, you know, you can fly. Rather than glide, you can just totally fly. You know, no restrictions, apparently. So, that sounds interesting. Probably not work very well, probably not, but... Yeah, definitely looking forward to getting around to this. It could be a, an interesting experience. Right, next we'll get on to two shop purchases. Or two shop purchases for the PS3. All the Xbox games were shop purchases. And uh, this one I've completed already. And this sounded like a really interesting game. And uh, I wanted to get it for quite a while, but never really, like, seen it at a decent price. And this is Ashura's Wrath on PS3. Ashura, Ashura, hope I'm saying that correctly. But yeah, that was uh, pre-owned from Granger Games for £5. So again, a pretty decent price. I usually see it for like £8. So yeah, I thought that was a good deal. So it's a game that's based in Japan. It's based on like Japanese um, mythology. And um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know. It's an interesting game. For me, it was not that interesting at points. Um, I feel like the cutscenes weren't too great. Uh, for me, I mean, I can see why some people maybe like this game. You know, people who are into like anime and stuff would probably like this. Uh, but for me, I just thought like the story and cutscenes were, you know, they're pretty mediocre, in my opinion. The gameplay was quite fun, though. You know, it wasn't you know spectacular, but um, you know, it was kind of fun. So you can see it comes complete, and I think this was, yeah, mint condition as well. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting game. It's got like elements of like quick time events. It's got like, beat 'em up elements. It's got shoot 'em up elements. Where you're like falling from the you know falling from the sky, and you like shoot things, projectiles and stuff. So it's very very interesting. You've got a boss battle with like an elephant. Um. So yeah, it's it's an interesting game. Like I say, it's for me. It's it just some of the cutscenes just dragged on. They weren't like I say they weren't really too interesting to me. But um, like I, said, I can see why people would probably like this game. If you're into anime, you're probably going to enjoy this. Uh, I would say at least give it a shot if you see it for maybe four or five pound. Give it a shot. Um, like I said, it's, it's an interesting game. It's one of those games that uh, didn't really sell well, so it's you know it's kind of a, a unique kind of game. And um, yeah, like I said, it was decent. Nothing special, but decent. Not a real long game. Maybe like a six-hour long game. You know, pretty short. So yeah, nothing really more I can say on it. It was it was a decent enough game. It was something a little bit new. Um, so yeah, decent. Definitely worth a you know definitely worth a try. You know if you look at gameplay of it and you like what you see, uh, yeah, you know definitely give it a shot. And uh, the last PS3 game I got was Prince of Persia. Just Prince of Persia, guys. And it was uh, three pounds. And you can see it's in this extremely sexy tin. Um, you know, I'm actually love these like tins and like slip sleeves and things. So um, seeing this for three pound, I just had to get. It, you know, I did want the game at some point because you know I do kind of like Prince of Persia. You know, it's not you know not some of my favourite games of all time, but you know they're pretty decent. You know, I, I did kind of like Sands of Time, and I uh, quite enjoyed the the Forgotten Sands. I thought the Forgotten Sands was a pretty good game. And see, this one's like a a cell shaded game. So it, for me, it sounds really, really interesting. Let's see what's in here. So that's what you usually get for the the main cover and disc. A couple of fingerprints, but eh, one very, very light scratch. But yeah, overall, pretty good condition. And if you look inside, you can see this uh, picture here of the prints. It's just. The, the prince and the other woman, I don't even know what her name is. Um, I think it's a new character, I don't think I've seen her before. It's not far anyway. But um, yeah, it's a pretty damn cool picture in the back. So yeah, definitely looking forward to you know giving this a shot. You know, with uh, cell shaded graphics, it's probably going to be quite interesting to be honest. I'm not really sure what kind of reviews this game gets. But um, definitely looking forward to try it out. Uh, the tin itself is in pretty good neck, apart from a couple of little necks there. You can see that. Uh, and at the top there's a few, well, scratches and stuff. But overall, pretty damn good tin. You know, it's a good condition tin. 
you know. So yeah, definitely happy to get that for three pound. That's probably what you're gonna pay just for the, the normal version. So yeah, more than happy to pick that up. And uh, now we go on to the Xbox 360 games, and uh, I got these uh, for a total of five pounds. So I got one for three pound, and the other two were one pound, uh, one pound each. So adding these to the Xbox collection, and the first one is Quake Four for a uh, three pound. Again, this is obviously not on the PlayStation. I think this is probably on PC. You know, I think Quake's quite a popular, you know, series for the PC. So you see, it comes complete. So I think the disc was pretty decent. Yeah, a few like scratches. Overall, pretty damn decent condition. And it comes with a quite a big manual. And it also comes with the bonus disc, which I believe has Quake 2 on it or something. Um, <coughs> sorry guys. Uh, let's see, also, yeah, the making of Quake 4 and Quake 2. So that comes on the, the bonus disc. So yeah, pretty damn good to get that. The person that had this before obviously had uh, cheat codes. So you can get invincibility and get all weapons, I'm guessing. Uh, extra health, extra ammunition. So um, yeah, cheats. Uh, no confirmation and game. What game does not pause? Okay, fair enough. So uh, yeah, some cheat codes. Not that I bother with cheat codes anymore. I used to love you know cheating on Grand Theft Auto and stuff, but nowadays I never bother with cheats to be honest. But yeah, Quake Four. Uh, played it for a little while. Sims, you know, pretty damn good. It's kind of like a horror, like shooter game. It's kind of like Doom Three in a way. Uh, yeah, I did notice a few similarities to Doom 3. We just walking along a corridor and then suddenly something jumps out at you. Uh, the weapons are pretty damn good, you know, pretty damn satisfying. So yeah, not play this one too much guys. I might play this in the month of October, uh, since October's coming up. And October's usually a month that I kind of like to play some horror games, you know. So uh, yeah, quick for it could be on the list of, uh, games, of uh, you know, scary games to play, or horror games. I wouldn't say it's scary, but... It's a horror game, I would say. Horror FPS. And the next game, I'm not going to get around to playing this uh, until I can play the, the previous game. But we have Gears of War 3. Really, really enjoy Gears of War 1. I've not got around to playing Gears of War 2 yet, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting around to that. And when I do, I've got uh, Gears of War 3 here, in case I'm ready to jump straight onto this one. Uh, see, it's Pound, guys. I love how you can get these games for like a pound, it's such a bargain guys, such a bargain. See that comes complete. Um, what the hell is that? HMV! There's a receipt in here guys. The receipt, HMV, get closer. Uh, so somebody bought this in Newcastle. For um... Thirty six ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, thirty six ninety nine. So I'm guessing they bought it more or less when it first came out. And they also pre ordered uh, FIFA twelve and Downton Abbey series two. So that's an interesting thing. So yeah. Just thought I'd add that, it's kinda interesting. But the FIFA twelve man. Uh so yeah, Gears of War three. Um, again, pretty damn decent condition disc. Very, very few marks on that. So yeah, guys, I have zero comment on this apart from the fact that it looks really, really good, just like the the first and I'm guessing the second game. The second game looks really, really cool as well. Uh, definitely looking forward to playing for that at some point. So yeah, gives it worth free. Glad to have it, guys. Glad to have it. And the last one is another one that I got for a pound, and it is the, the classics version of um, Project Gotham Racing 4. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really too bothered with the classics. I mean, they don't look great, the whole classic things. It's like, you know, PlayStation with the whole, you know, platinum thing. It doesn't look great, but, you know, it's still the same game, so that's, that's what matters to me, basically. You've got car racing, you've got, yeah, you can 
racing bikes. Which I don't really like to do in like these kind of games. You know, I don't really like bikes versus cars because I always bang into a car and got you know get knocked flying off my bike. Basically, it's kind of annoying. So I definitely prefer to drive cars. Um, you know, when you get the option of both, basically. And that comes complete with like a huge manual, heavy thing. Yeah, 33 pages. It's really bloody heavy manual. Not gonna lie, uh, this one's got quite a few scratches if I can remember. Yeah, it's quite a lot of marks on that. But I've actually played this quite a lot. I've been playing this recently over the last, like, couple of weeks or so. And I've got to say, this is actually a really, really good game. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting uh, the previous game as well, Project Go From Racing 3. Which I'm guessing will be a pound as well. A Granger game, so I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, it wasn't in there the last time I was I was in, I was looking for it, you know, to pick it up for like a pound or something, but I didn't see it. But, um, I don't like this comment at the bottom. Five stars, the only racing game worth driving. So yeah, screw Forza, screw Gran Turismo, screw Women Need for Speed, screw Crash Team Racing. This is the only one I want. You know, this is the only one worth playing, guys, you know. It's funny that because a lot of the events in, like, the career mode, it's not even racing, it's like time attacks and, like, uh, like events, you have to like avoid cones and things. So you know, a lot of the race, a lot of the events, sorry, are not even racing. You know, so that's quite funny actually. But yeah, overall, guys, I'm really, really enjoying this. I'm like 14 in the uh, in the world, in you know, in the ranks or whatever it is. So yeah, I'm quite far into the career mode, and uh, yeah, really, really enjoying it. I think it's a really bloody good game. Not as enjoyable as Forza, uh, Forza Motorsport 3, but I still think this is a really, really fun game. And, uh, yeah, definitely worth, uh, you know, getting for a pound, you know. So, yeah, that is... <laughs> yeah, guys, that is it. I don't know what I tried to say there. Uh, so, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching this. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, so, quite a, a decent amount of games here. Um, I'm probably going to try and, you know, cut down getting games for a little while. Try and save up some money because that Christmas time's coming up. You know, it's it's been such a fast year. I can't believe it's almost bloody October. Bloody crazy. Where is the year when, guys? Where is it when? Unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Um, let me know what you've been playing recently. Uh, what you think of any of these games. Um, yeah, what do you think of Resident Evil 7? That could be an interesting one. What do you think of Resident Evil 7? You know, do you have the same kind of thing as me? Do you find it quite difficult and frustrating? Or do you think it's, a, you know, a breeze? Do you think it's easy? You know, you can also play it with VR. Which I'm guessing can be quite creepy, but bloody VR, it's... I think it costs more than the PlayStation 4 console itself. It's bloody unbelievable, guys. It's way too much money, in my opinion. But anyway, guys, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, so I've not made a video for so long. Uh, and then over the next week or so... Oh, it's getting bright. Over the next week or so, I'll try and do a, a games that recently completed. Because, like I say, I have completed a few games uh, over the last like month or so. So... Yeah, we'll definitely get around to getting, you know, getting into making that. So, um, yeah, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I will catch you all in the next video. See you guys. Thanks for watching.